So now the question is why 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 do why do teleport solve all our problems, right? So before here is the the equation we had pro from before. And um, in order to understand why the teleport solve our problems, we have to go back to the theory of Markov chains that I just alluded to um, um, in the previous lecture. So the way we define a Markov chain is the following. So Markov chain is this abstract mathematical object that has the following ingredients or parts to it. So first, we think that we have a set of states x, OK? Then we have a transition matrix P where Pij simply measures what is the probability that if, if we were at state i, how likely are we to transition to state j um, in a given time step, right? So Pij means given that I was at j in previous step, how likely am I transitioned to, know, to, to state i, okay? And then pi is a, is a stationary probability distribution of being um, at any of these states x. And our goal, right, is to compute the value of this equation that pi equals p times pi, right? So this would be a, pro a stationary probability distribution of this Markov chain that is defined over a set of states and with the transition matrix uh, P. And again, you imme immediately see the, the, the correspondence to our initial page rank equation. Here we have pi equals p times uh, pi, and we had r equals m times r. So theory of Markov chains says the following. It says that for any start ve vector, the power iteration applied to this Markov transition matrix P will converge to, to a unique uh, positive stationary vector as long as this matrix uh, P has three properties. It has to be stochastic, it has to be irreducible, and aperiodic. So now what I will show is that for each of these three conditions, stochastic, irreducible, and aperiodic, actually adding random teleports gives us, a, gives us a, in some sense, stochastic transition matrix um, that has these properties. So what we will do now is convince ourselves that our matrix M, uh, together with these uh, random teleports, has all the three properties that we need for, uh, the, th uh, for the page rank vector R to exist. So the first question is, why do teleports make M stochastic? So a matrix is stochastic if its columns sum to one. So in our case, or in case of dead ends, when we have this node M that has no outlinks, the column for node M did not sum to one, it summed to zero, and the st stochasticity uh, condition for the matrix was violated. So now if we add this random teleportation, we can th that occurs with probability one, we can basically think of this as adding ad the green edges from no node M to any other uh, node in the network, including the self edge, right? This means that our matrix M now got transformed and our column for M, for node M, now has these values of one over three in it, so the column sums to one and we get the stochastic, uh, stochasticity property of matrix M. The way we can think about this in terms of equations is that basically we say, our, we define a new matrix A where we take our previous matrix uh, M and now we, we, I introduce two pieces of notation here. First, I have this vector A where the ith component of vector A equals one if node i has out degree zero, if node i is a dead end, and otherwise it has value zero. And then this vector E is just vector of all ones. So it's a vector where every component has a value of one. So what, we basic, what this basically means is it, we take matrix M and wherever there is a column with, uh, in the matrix M that has uh, all zeros, we replace that with one over the out degree of, of that given node, exactly what we, what we did in the case of M. So this is what we did now is basically random, random teleportations. What they do, they take our matrix M that cannot be stochastic if the graph has dead ends and transform that into a new matrix A that is now stochastic by, by taking the teleportation with probability one out of the nodes with zero out degree. So that's the first property. The second property is that M has to be aperiodic. So we say that a chain is uh, periodic if there exists some value k such that the interval between two visits to some state um, s is always a multiple of k. So for example, if we were to have a graph uh, on three nodes with a, with a directed cycle as I have it here, 
then for example this is a this would this would be a, a periodic periodic chain because the the random walk here is deterministic um, and every every two steps we return back to the to the same node so by adding teleports what this basically means is that um, that at any time we will be able to jump out of, of this kind of infinite infinite loop and we can e even think that what we have is we have this self loop so that the the random walker can can get uh, can spend some time at a given node and this way the periodicity is broken um, and this is how basically random teleports solve the periodicity problem now the last property we need to talk about is irreducibility and we say that um, M is irreducible when from, from any state there is a non-zero probability of going um, to any other state in the, in the network. This means that basically we can never get stuck in a given state. So the way, for example, we would make our given uh, graph here irreducible is to add all these other, other possible links, which basically means we would add um, random jumps. So this would mean that, the, that um, there is a non-zero probability of going from any state to any other state uh, in our graph. So putting all this together, this is, this is um, exactly what random jumps do. So basically, Google's solution to, to PageRank and to uh, random surfer uh, interpretation of PageRank was to introduce random jumps. So the idea is that we, stay, we want to take matrix M, make it, make it stochastic, aperiodic, in, uh, irreducible. All this is achieved by slightly modifying the, our random walking process where at each step a random surfer has two options. With probability beta, the random surfer goes and follows a random outlink. And with probability 1 minus beta, uh, the random surfer jumps to some other page at random. So now what this basically means is that this now changes our page rank equation. So if you think about the page rank equation now, it's a bit different. So here, for example, the score of node j uh, can be computed as follows, right? So basically what this is saying is the following. The importance of node j is first the sum of the importances of no all the nodes i that point to it, where um, r sub j, r sub i is the probability that uh, random walker is at node i, then we divide that by the out degree of i as the probability that the random walker will actually traverse the link towards j, and this only happens with probability beta because the random walker, when they are at node i, has to decide to actually follow a link. And this happens with probability beta. And then, of course, how likely is the random walker to visit node j? It either does it by, our, by, by following a link, or with probability 1 minus beta, the random walker decides to jump. And if the random walker decides to jump, then it will land at a given node j with probability 1 over n, where n is the number of nodes um, in the network. Right? So basically, we took our initial formulation of page rank, and now we change it a bit where we have the random walk part. This is the part where we kind of multiply with beta. And we have the random jump part, where we have the 1 minus beta. So now the question is, um, given this new random walk formulation, is, is power iteration still going to work? Right Now we have a different, more complicated um, recursive equation. So the question is, how, how do we compute this? And the way we compute this is basically to, to, run, to run our eigenvector finding method, our power iteration again. The way, the way we see that basically we have the same problem as before is to notice the following. So we have this, what we will call Google matrix. We will call it A, and we will express A as a matrix M plus some uh, other matrices. So we take our matrix M and multiply it with beta. This is the, the part that comes due to random jumps. And then what we want to do is we have this other part, 1 minus beta, that basically this is the probabilities or transitions due to random jumps. And um, simply, the expression we get here is that this is 1 minus beta, 1 over n, where n is the number of nodes in the graph, times the outer product of this vector of all, of all ones called E. Okay? So what this means is that even with these random jumps, the page rank uh, solution can be expressed exactly as we had it before, that R equals A, now this is the Google matrix, not the matrix M anymore, times R. Of course, one question that we need to answer is, what is a good value of beta, right? How often should the random walker jump? For example, if beta would be 0, 
then what would that mean is that the random walker jumps all the time, so all the nodes in the network have um, exactly the same, pro the same page rank score. Because the random walker is not really walking over the graph, it's just randomly jumping all the time. If we set uh, uh, beta to be equal to 1, then basically there is no random jumps. And this means that our matrix A wouldn't be um, stochastic anymore and, and so on. And we would have no random jumps and page rank wouldn't, wouldn't really work. So what turns out is that the good value for beta is to set beta between 0.8 and 0.9. And usually people set beta to be 0.85, which basically means that for every five steps, uh, you do a random jump. So a random walker, in some sense, in, on the average, would do five steps and a jump, another five steps and a jump, and so on. So that's basically the, uh, the idea. So let's now see how this page rank formulation would work in, in the real world. So imagine we have our old graph as we had it before, three nodes. Uh, and in this case, node M is a, is a spider trap, right? There is this self loop. What I also have on this graph is I have these green edges. And these green edges, you can think of them as uh, edges that are there due to, due to random jumps. So we have our matrix M, as we had it before. With matrix M, everything is fine. It's still, it's still stochastic. The only problem is that node M is a, is a dead end. Oh, sorry, is a spider trap. And um, now what I also did in this graph is I labeled every, every edge with, the, with its transition probability. So the way, the way we do now is we take this matrix M, we take this other matrix of one-thirds and multiply it with one minus beta. So in this case, we are uh, assuming beta is 0.8. And this gives us the, ma the matrix A. And now if we do the ma multiply our R with matrix A, this is how the um, using power iteration, these are the different versions of vector R as we keep uh, multiplying. And at the end, the paging scores we would converge to are given here. So basically, the score for node y would be 7 over 33. For node a would be 5 over 33. And for node m would be 20, 21 over 33. So what do we see? We see that m is still the most important node in the graph because of this uh, spider trap. But we see that nodes y and a have also non-zero score. And actually, node a is more important than node y. So it seems everything works and everything is fine. 